you're about to learn some of the most useful and underrated illustrator tips. And I'm not talking about basic stuff. These are the tips that save hours, solve real headaches and unlock features most people miss. But the best one? That's coming at the end. So, let's get started. So the first tip is gonna save you a lot of time and I'm talking about situations when you have some illustrations with a lot of colors and at some moment you decided that you want to change those colors and that's gonna take you a while to do. So how to fix that? For example, as you can see on this image, I have this cucumber and I have a color palette. So now with a perfectly set it up document, I can simply go to swatches, double click on any swatch that I pre-created and now I can change its values. For example, I can make it more blue and as you can see, everything is changing. Everything with this color is changing, as you can see it on the boots, on the cucumber itself, but how does it work? It works quite easily. What you need to do is to create a new object then to assign the color that you want to have, for example, this magenta color, okay. And now you need to go to swatches, press plus icon here, and make sure that this watch is global. What it means? It means that whenever you make a copy of this object or any other shape and you assign this watch to the object, now you can double click on this watch. As you can see, it's have some triangle on the bottom and you can change its value. And all the objects with this exact assigned watch will change as well. But if you have a situation when you did not use those global swatches, and you still have a situation when you have a lot of different colors, but you don't know how to grab them and assign a new global swatch, what do you need to do? You need to press Y on your keyboard and it's gonna select magic wand on your tools panel. Now double click and make sure that this magic wand is selected to fill color tolerance 1. Now click on the object that you want to select. For example, I want to select this green shade. Perfect. Now all the objects with this exact green shade color are going to be selected and you can assign a new swatch for them, you can make it global, you can do whatever you want. And the same goes for, for example, stroke objects, because you can turn off fill color, you can turn on uh, stroke color and assign tolerance. The less tolerance is, the more precise the tool will be. In situation when you want to grab all colors that are kind of greenish, but not exactly the same color. You can increase this tolerance to 16, 32, it depends on your situation, but overall, that's how it works. Let's go to the next tip. And the next one is very useful for situations when you want to grab appearance from one object and paste it into another object. For example, I have this square, let me draw it. I have this white square and I want to grab appearance from this text. I really like it and I would like to have the same stroke, the same glow that's coming out of those strokes. But how to do that? You have two main ways. The first way is the most efficient one, is simply go to appearance section over here. If you don't know where this panel is, you can go to window and you'll find it over here, appearance. And now simply select uh, the text layer that you want, would like to grab appearance from and now you'll see this small little icon. Now simply drag and drop it to your object and that's it. Now you have your object with assigned appearance. Also you can do it in another way. You can open layers panel from this section, expand it on this triangle and now you see that we have a subscribe text and subscribe if you like this content and if you found it useful. And also we have this rectangle. Now press and hold Alt on your keyboard and move a circle from subscribe to rectangle. That's it. Now you copied your appearance. The next one is very helpful for situations when you need to make couple of copies based on specific rotation point and you want to make it very fast and efficient 
and that's quite easy to do. What do you need to do to create the same clock, for example? You need to create a base point, for example, a circle. It's not necessary, but it's easier for you to do so. So I have this siren point and I need to create a couple of lines for our hours. For example, here, let's assign a stroke. Yes, I like it. It looks fine. Now what you need to do is to select this line, press R on your keyboard. Now hold Alt or Option on your keyboard, hover the center of the circle and click with your left mouse button. Center, click. Now as you can see, you have a new pop-up window with rotate settings and this window allows you to choose at which angle you would like to rotate your object and the most fun thing is that you basically can type 360 which is full circle rotation and you can choose how you would like to divide those 360 what i mean by that is you can type divide literally and now hit 12 on your keyboard so it's going to divide 360 by 12 and it's going to output it to 30 degrees now press copy command d to do the same command over and over again so it's gonna copy and paste it and rotate it by 30 degrees based on this point so command d command d command d over and over again and that's it now you have it done the only thing you left to do is to create a second line of those uh, sections for example let's create a shorter one press r option click now let's make it 360 divided by 24 for example copy command d and over and over again until you make it done and the next tip is going to help you to create this beautiful dotted line in adobe illustrator for your stroke you might know that there is no specific setting to do so so it it's kind of tricky but let me show you how it works you need to create a line like so and as you can see i have it already set it up so let's click on stroke to expand those settings and what you need to do is to enable dash line then make sure your dash is zero and your gap is whatever you want your gap to be for example 80 or 40 doesn't matter based on this gap you're gonna see that the space between those circles is changing so if you want to have a bigger space simply make it 80 if you want to have it smaller go to 40 and etc and the next one is cap it should be round cap because otherwise it's not gonna work so round cap dash line zero any number you want that's it you have your dotted stroke okay and this feature is quite new for a lot of illustrator users it came up a couple of years ago but still a lot of guys don't know about that so let me show you for example you would like to have this circle beneath this white part but over here you would like it to stay on the same position on top how do you do that previously you needed to expand those go to shape builder tool or to uh, pathfinder and do a lot of different stuff to make it work but right now you can select those two objects go to object now intertwine mate and now you can choose which section is going to be above or under uh, the specific line for example here we have intersection and i would like to drop this blue circle down uh, underneath this white one so click and that's it it works quite fine but sometimes if you have complicated shape you might see that it's not ideal because sometimes you might see it's glitching you might see some artifacts and that's a problem with this tool but for simple shapes for simple situations it's gonna work just fine and the next one is Pathfinder and we'll know about this tool I, I think we'll know but you probably don't know a specific trick about this palette so what do i mean pathfinder is a palette that allows you to combine or subtract different shapes from each other for example you can unite them you can minus round them and etc but this one is destructible so whenever you decide that okay i would like to move this square to any other place you cannot do that it's it's over it's done so we need to press command z go back and move it over and over again and it's not so great so what you can do is you can select those objects you can hold 
Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on one of those icons. As you can see, you have even description here. Option click to create compound shape and subtract from shape area. So let's click it. Option, click. And as you can see, it converted our object into a compound shape. Now I can move this square to any place I want and it's gonna be just fine. You might think that, okay, so it's just recolor this square into the background, yes? No, it actually make it transparent so you can see everything beneath those shapes and it's gonna work just fine. And you can do that with any of those modes and that's really great. The next tip is gonna be very helpful for situations when you need to adjust a shape or you want to add something unique into your typography to your logotype. For example, here I have this A letter and I would like to have this interesting looking tail or whatever you want to do, it's up to you. So you can do that with the pen tool, but it's gonna take you a while to make it look great but with a pencil tool it's quite easy so let me show you how it works let's make a copy of this object let's move everything around so let's select this object go to object expand so we can have it fully editable with our anchor points now let's select it with our black arrow press n on your keyboard and that way you'll select pencil tool double click on this pencil tool and please make sure that you have this section turned on edit selected path this one you can adjust later on but for now please make sure that this one is turned on press ok and now what you can do you can simply draw from some sections of your type and it's gonna affect the entire shape as you can see, it's not just adding some sections to your logotype or your uh, object, it's literally recreating this section in order to be smooth and so it looks good. And you can do that with any section. For example, here, you can simply start from this one. I don't know what I'm doing, but okay, let's, let's make it fun. That's it. It works. It's a fully closed shape. It looks good. It works well and you must use it if you want to create something interesting and you don't want to spend a lot of time with the pen tool. But sometimes this pencil tool might be a bit too harsh, too accurate. So if you want to have it in a more smooth way, you can simply drag this slider from accurate to smooth. Double click on pencil tool and now change this slider because it's gonna affect how your pencil tool works. The next one is gonna be useful for those who love to create designs with different kind of badges, but you don't know how to make them in an efficient way. So let me show you. Simply go to Object, select Star Tool, and now you can create a star. Basically, whenever you're creating a star, you'll see that it looks like this, but you can adjust the amount of those segments simply by clicking up arrow key or down arrow key on your keyboard while you hold left mouse button. So you need to hold left mouse button and while you're doing so you can click top arrow key or bottom arrow key and that's it, it's gonna affect how it works. Now what you can do is to press option on your keyboard to adjust size or control on your keyboard to adjust distance between those objects. As you can see it works just fine. Let's leave it like so. Now you can create rounded edges for each of those sections. Simply go over here to this small, small, small icon and it's gonna allow you to smoothen out those edges. That's it. Very easy to do. And it was very difficult for a lot of users previously because they needed to go through this kind of hell, but now it's even easier because in newest updates in Illustrator you can change uh, this setting all the time because they changed how this star tool works, they changed it into a life shape. So as you can see in new versions of Adobe Illustrator you have this slider on the right 
which allows you to adjust the amount of points. Also, you have this letter, which allows you to choose uh, what's uh, the distance, what's uh, the radius from the outer uh, circle to the inner circle will be. And also, you can adjust this rounding part. So it's way easier in newest versions, but if you're stuck on quite old versions, you know how to do that with the hotkeys. Let's get back to our page and I'll show you how to work with the knife tool in a very easy and simple way. So as you know, knife tool allows you to cut your object uh, so you can move those things around, literally doing what it does. <laughs> so if you want to make it more precise, if you want to keep it straight, you need to select your knife tool and now hold Option, not Shift, because Shift is not gonna work. Hold Option on your keyboard. And now, as you can see, you can create straight lines. And while holding Alt, you can also hold Shift, so you can create a lines with a 45 degrees constraint. And as a result, you will have perfectly aligned sections. And the last one is probably my favorite and the most used one. Whenever you have a lot of stuff outside of your artboard, but you would like to see only things inside of those artboards, you can go to View and Trim View. And that way, everything outside of your artboard will be hidden, not removed, not deleted, only hidden. And you can check that by going to View and Outline. Control Y or Command Y. As you can see, everything is here, is just hidden. So guys, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to Artflow, and let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments. Until next time, keep creating, stay inspired, and remember, sometimes the best design happens when you break a few rules.